Teach me grappling. What's up, guys? Brian Peterson. This is Brian. Brian. Ryan, what's up, Ryan? You ever do a guillotine before? Every now and then. Every now and then. Ryan is known at our academy as, what's the opposite of a master? <laughs> he's the man, he's the master of the flying guillotine. So, show me that flying guillotine real quick. Go ahead, just real quick, it's kind of fun. Watch, watch this. Like the setup? Yeah, yeah, what do you do? I just set up this just, Oh. And then he jumps up and he catches the neck in the guillotine. All right, we're not doing a flying guillotine. Um, we always make fun of Rye because he lands it, but you landed in a tournament the other day. Yeah. So, and it got you the takedown? Yeah. Nice. Okay, enough of that, enough of that. Someone commented and really wanted to know a mount, mounted guillotine defense. What do you do? or for you guys to get upset with my pronunciation of guillotine, it's guillotine or guillotine in English. Um, they wanna know how to get out when it's mounted. This is not taught at a lot of places, like how to do it. So let me talk about this. First of all, we have a guillotine with an arm in, see the arm? And then, and remember there's many versions of guillotines. You have no arm, you have the high elbow. So all of that stuff matters. Like it changes what happens. But let's say, I'm gonna give a classic example. I end up snapping the guy down. I catch a, a front headlock guillotine position. Let's say I was to wrap up the guillotine. Can you put it on through? Yeah. Now, let's say I started to squeeze and the guy, because he feels like he's choking, and he can't drive into me to, fit, to relieve pressure, he kind of slumps to his side. This is similar, by the way, to Dustin Poirier and Habib Nurmagomedov. If you guys remember, remember how Habib fell to his left? Go ahead and fall to your left. Just kind of collapse. So sometimes a guy will collapse and he'll do this to try to relieve pressure. The only difference is, to go back to the Habib Nurmagomedov discussion. Climb over this one. Climb over. Yeah. It was more like this. Do you see what I mean? And then Habib fell to the side and then he kind of like, it loosened and then he eventually got back up and then he got his head out. So I just wanted to mention that because it's a, a real world example that was very famous and a lot of you guys saw it. But let's say I was here in the close guard and he slumped. You know, I was choking him, and then he slumps to try to relieve pressure. Do you feel that relieves some pressure? Yep. Go ahead and drop down, drop. And then what happens is you end up in the mount. Sometimes that's one way it'll happen. And then once you're here, I'm gonna show you guys how most uh, I prefer to finish. Watch my position. My right hand's around his neck, so I, uh, I gotta put my right hip down. I wanna crush his head. So you see how I'm here? Even with one hand, I want to turn my hip like this. I want my right hip down, and then I want to squeeze here. Does you feel that? Yeah. You feel how tight that is? Yeah. Now I will show you uh, another version that does happen at times. Sometimes a guy has a good grip, and he just does full on back arch, like this. Like more square. So he locks it up, and then connects his hands, and then he just, you just see like this. Can you come around here to see the back of Ryan's neck? Uh, create your balance so I'm not slow. Yeah, now he's trying to escape and I'm just arching up. You see that? You see, felt that one? Oh yeah. Okay, so you'll see that sometimes and you'll see the one with the hip down. Notice that difference. One more time on the hip down, which is the way I do it, I prefer. If I had a mounted guillotine, whether one arm or connected, I would not go like this. I would turn my hip and I would like be here, okay? That's how I do it. Now, um, another way, let me just mention it. How else you might be here? You'll, you'll, you'll get a guillotine and then when you pull guard, the guy will like forward roll, you know what I'm saying? Like he'll flip, you know, yeah, not, yeah, that way. And then you'll end up in the mount and then again, I drop my hip and you see how my heel 
pulls in like this. So now try to move. See that? As I'm squeezing, it's a tight lock in the mounted guillotine. All right. Now, what do we do if this happens? So I showed you how I like to do it. Uh, I showed you another way with a back arch, how some people will do it at times. They just have such a strong grip and they just rip at your neck and pull and it sucks. But I will say this, the mounted guillotine works, but honestly, it's almost not as dangerous as the guard guillotine because there's some dynamic that happens when you invert and put your opponent on top of you. It sounds like you jump from the frying pan into the fire and it gets worse, but it's not always true. It's almost like a double-edged sword. It could be worse for your opponent, which is why Habib kind of slumped off to the side. I, a lot of times, I should do a video on how to defend the guillotine, and I'll do that probably on another video because it would be too, way too much. This video would go probably 25 minutes if I went into that variation. But I'm gonna talk about this. Right, can you get me in a guillotine? Okay. So yeah, from guard. All right. So arm in. Uh, no, no arm, but I, I, wanna, I wanna focus on the neck. Uh, guys, this could be an arm in guillotine. It could happen the same way, but let's not, honestly, this one isn't the most dangerous. It's more about when he just has my neck. Now, if he locks me up and I were to pull on top, first of all, notice what you did first. What did you do? Pull my hand out. Why did you pull your hand out? So it would have landed on my head. He would have landed on his face. So when I'm here and the guy's squeezing, squeeze, and I pull you, it makes you want to pose. That doesn't mean I'm out of the hole, but that helps. It certainly helps. But let's say you re-pummel and you make a grip. And now you can try both variations. You can try crossed ankles or grapevines, or you can try crossed ankles, whichever you like. And then give me a good back arch and a squeeze. Good, got me there. Now give me a, a right hip down, left foot stomp the mat. Yeah, not too wide though, not too wide. Yeah, yeah, like that, yeah. And then now, squeeze. Good, that was good. Okay, now, uh, get, keep it, keep it. Now let me talk to the camera, turn it. Turn, turn, turn. Okay, so now I wanna talk to everybody. So lock, lock me up, lock me up. Now, when you guys are here, defense for this position. One thing I have is I have my left hand. Some people like to do this for self-preservation, like holding the wrist. It makes sense. Personally, I'm not a huge fan. In most submission defense videos that I will ever do, I rarely will ever guard with my hand to the, to the hand on my neck. Most of the time, I take away the elements that my opponent needs. So one thing I can do to defend is I turn, this is gonna be that invisible jujitsu people love to talk about with Hicks and Gracie or uh, other, other great jujitsu guys that show the little invisible things of jujitsu. Uh, just keep your grip pretty good. Now watch what I'm gonna do right here. Take, look at my, my jaw and watch what I'm doing. Now go, go ahead and squeeze, squeeze my neck, squeeze. Squeeze, keep going, keep going, come on. See what's happening? Yep. What's happening? Your come chin on. is going into my ribs. My chin is going into your ribs. I'm turning it sideways. When he's pulling, he's not even pulling into my neck. Squeeze. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, R, K, K. Now watch this, keep squeezing. If I turn my head here, elementary. You see? So when you see how I allowed you to drop and turn me? Like if I look this way, I expose my neck. What? Ah, uh, ah. Uh. Yeah. Now go. Come on. Now look at this hand, guys. Look at this hand. Grab, just like you do when you're on top, squeeze. Pull. See how I'm pulling? Try to activate. Come on. You see? It's very hard to activate. Yep. Okay, next, I can go bridge and my shoulder 
goes right in his neck, and I make him release the hole. So that, I'm sorry about that. Is that okay? All right. So that's one idea you guys can use. Um, there's, again, I, I, I would encourage you, don't always think, it, the first thing everybody does, they go for the grips. Like they want to hold the hands, which it can work. I'm not saying it's not good. But there's something about jujitsu you guys will learn when you learn how to let go of defending. It's like, if he goes, like grab my neck from behind. Like, if I grab like this, I'm trying too hard to stop him from doing what he's trying to do, when really I should be moving. So if he grabs my neck, I should be moving. I should be moving. I should not, I should not be grabbing when I grab. I'm stagnant, I'm staying in one place. And that's, that's a bad idea. It's, it's almost like going into a fetal position to block strikes. Yes, you're kind of defending, but you're not escaping. And you're really just, it's gonna get worse if you let somebody crack you open. Once they crack that egg, it's over. So um, turning and coming in, uh, I wanna also mention, can you, can you go to, uh, the, the modified guillotine uh, where you have a shin across my belly. Mm -hmm. So let's say he has shin across the belly style and here, I'm not gonna go deep, but if I slump and he mounts, I never let this leg swivel around, okay? I never let this one here because when this comes to here and he turns the hip, it could get real nasty, real fast. Good, you got me right there, right? So when this, here's a little tip. I don't wanna go deep into it, but this is that shin across the belly style guillotine. When he goes to here, he may try to swivel it around you. Do not allow it, do not. When this is here, pick your knee up to your chest. Use your elbow, develop your guard. You see, I can develop a lockdown, okay? Or even an outside lockdown, and I can start to go towards his back. Um, that, that's something that you can do when somebody's going for a mounted guillotine, but uh, this is not a, a move you use like straight up when he's like already mounted and he's already grapevined your leg. So go to, go to the mounted guillotine thing, okay? And then just come on, follow. You see, like if he's like this, and you guys are grabbing like this, and now he switches his foot, you're not gonna like just get this leg out so easily. It may be difficult, but it is possible. Maybe I keep my elbow, and now he's trying, no, no, no. Just try to stay in the mount. Yeah, you see it? Now, if I develop the half guard, I can use the lockdown. Try to guillotine. Yeah, are you, you're not even locked. Come on, bro. Lock. Yeah, look at this, I grip, keep going. I pull, turn my hip, turn my jaw. Now I can go here, break the grips. If I want, I can go towards his back. You also have the counter shoulder lock, okay? Like that, if he lets go in the middle of the attack, whoop, I can start to come up, look for the back, twister. Fun, 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 yep. all right. So there's a little bit of mounted guillotine defense, where I do it one time so you can learn. Let's yeah. say, let's say I was, boom, I caught, I caught a guillotine and I mounted, and I was dropping my hip, right here. Turn your head hard to the right. Yes, jaw into there. That's gonna help you breathe. Now, when I'm trying to choke you, take that right hand, reach around my neck, right hand, pull. and pull, yes, just like that. Now, now learn how to survive this, are you ready? Yep. See that? Now go ahead, give me a little bridge and roll to the left, and come up on top to do basic guillotine defense. Now he's got shoulder pressure. And now I'm the one getting choked. I'm gonna have to go to the next move. You better watch out, homie. <laughs> All right, hope you guys enjoy. Teach me grappling. You ask a question, I answer it. Maybe not every single time. There's a lot of questions out there. Thank you guys so much. I appreciate the gentleman that asked that question and helped me give me a great idea for a video. 
and I helped another person and I hope I helped many, many more. Links are down in the description box if you guys wanna to contribute to this channel. If you guys have questions in the future, I would love to do videos on them. It would be nice if you guys wanted to contribute. Maybe we can come up with like some type of thing. You guys contribute, I do a video on it. That would be kind of cool. Anyway, we'll see you guys next time with more great stuff.